you know, I've been thinking a lot about this idea that there are things in life that we can control and then there's all the other things. <laughs> and so as we talk about simplifying today, why don't we simplify the things in our home and the different things in our life that we can control, get those really streamlined and manageable so that when the other stuff comes up, we have more bandwidth and energy to dedicate to that stuff. So why don't we head inside the house and I'll show you what it is I'm talking about. One of the biggest ways we can simplify our life is to limit options one coat, one purse, just a couple pairs of shoes. And I know what you're thinking. You want options, right? <laughs> We're led to believe marketing, Instagram, everything around us leads us to believe that we want options. I wanna see when I wake up, how do I feel in the morning? What do I feel like wearing? But I think what you're gonna find that one of the biggest ways we can simplify our life is to limit our options in every area of our home. And that cuts down on the number of decisions we have to make every day. And at first it might feel a little bit limiting, but after a little bit of time, I think you're gonna find that you love not having to make all of these decisions, not having so much inventory to manage, and how much simpler it makes your life. Okay, so next, let's talk about shaping our space. And what I mean by that is promoting the things that we use every single day and clearing out the extra so it's easy to get to the stuff we use every single day. This seems like a no-brainer, but it's amazing how the clutter creeps in. So I'm gonna use this drawer as an example. So do you see how easy it is to get to the things I use every single day? But what do most of us do? Um, let me see here. We tend to do something like this. And then we wonder why it's so hard to keep this clean, but also why it's kind of a pain in the butt to get ready in the morning, right? So shape your space, promote the things you use all the time and clear out all the extra stuff you're not actually using it anyways. Okay, I have a couple other really good ones I'm excited to share with you, but as long as we're over here, let's talk about inventory. So if any system in your home is not working, like laundry, what it usually means is there's too much inventory. So if again, if a system isn't working, look at the inventory around it. So if we're talking about laundry, if you have piles of laundry around the house, it gets piled on the couch, in, in bedrooms, on bathroom floors, hampers are overflowing, that usually means we have too many linens and clothing. And also if we're not staying on top of it, it might mean that our laundry space isn't a friendly space to be. So again, like we were talking in the bathroom, we need to promote the stuff we use all the time and let the other stuff go, especially if you have a small laundry space. I know we're fortunate to have a whole laundry room, but if you have like a closet or a teeny tiny space, we have to pare it down to just the things we use every single time we do laundry and let the other stuff go out of there. I have separate videos on those things, so I will link to those down below. Oh yeah, no, I know. And you know, I mean, normally I love helping with these things. I know, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's totally right up my alley. So. You know, things are a little bit busy for us right now. I mean, you know how it goes with uh, four kids and everything, but I would love to be able to support what you're doing in the future. So would you check with me again in the fall? I'm hoping by then um, we'll just have a little bit more time and bandwidth and I would love to be able to help then. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Yep, bye-bye. All right, so we all hear about saying no, right? Say no, say no. Like, don't, don't agree to things that you don't wanna do. But it's not always that easy, right? We're still women, we're still, people pleasers and we want people to be happy with us. We don't want people to be put in a position where they have to do something all by themselves. We know how that feels. And so I think it can be really helpful to be able to say no tactfully by having a few key phrases in your pocket. Whatever it is, it can be quick, it can be broad. And like I said, you don't have to include it at all. And then if you want to, you can also say, but I really want your events to be successful or I would love to help in the future. Would you check with me again in the fall or this time next year? And so by having some of these phrases worked out ahead of time, I do feel like it's a whole lot easier to say no when it comes up and for you not to be caught off guard. So if you're just like at a soccer game and something like this comes up, you already know ahead of time what it is that you would say. Okay, let's talk about creating a uniform-ish. <laughs> I know for many, the idea of wearing the same thing every single day doesn't necessarily appeal to you. So we can modify this to fit our our lifestyle, our, our wants, our needs, how much clothing inventory we wanna manage. And so for me, during the week, like day in, day out, you're gonna find me wearing a black t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Like that is my go-to uniform for during the week. Now, if we're going to church, we're going out, 
I'm inviting you over today uh, to visit, then I like to put on something that has a little bit more personality. In the past, I've done the all black even for that kind of stuff too, but I'm branching out a little bit more. So I do have a few tops that have some color. This is Tom's over here. I just have a few <laughs> that has some color. I still wanna keep that inventory low and limit it to what I actually wear. But what I find about this, again, limiting options, is that it is so easy to get dressed in the morning. I don't have to think about it. And again, it makes it so that I have a very low clothing inventory. I don't have to shop for a lot of pieces, which I really like. It's really easy to take care of. And the other thing is that when I look at my closet in the morning, every single thing is an option. So please make sure that if there's anything that doesn't fit, is uncomfortable, you wore it once and you didn't actually really like it, let that stuff go now and keep your closet super streamlined and limited to only things that are an actual option for something to wear today. All right, the next tip is to unsubscribe, all right? Our emails fill up with all of these emails we knowingly or didn't knowingly sign up for, right? But the problem is, it takes time and that's why many of us put this off is because it takes a lot of time. It's really tedious to go through your whole email and unsubscribe from all the email lists that you don't wanna be on anymore. And that's why you can use a service like Unroll Me where it will scan your email, you put your email address in and it'll scan it and it'll find all of these subscriptions, many you didn't even know that you had anymore. And you can just go through and do check boxes next to the ones that you want to be unsubscribed from. And so that's what I did. I went through um, my email address that I just kind of use for all the things you sign up for. And it came up with 132 different subscriptions that I had that I, I did not need. I kept like seven, I think, that I wanted to keep. And the rest, 132, I was able to unsubscribe from. And this whole process took I don't know, from installing the app, I did it on my phone, from installing the app to actually doing it, it probably took about 10 minutes. And so that was a huge win. You will not believe the weight this takes off your shoulders. <laughs> we don't realize the weight of all these emails, uh, what it has on us. So I would highly encourage you to do this. It is a huge way to simplify your life moving forward. Okay, I'm just gonna try and listen to a podcast quick and vacuum while we finish up this conversation. Does that seem familiar at all? We're always trying to fit so much in to every moment. And you all know the research. Multitasking doesn't work. It's so much better if we just focus on a singular task at a time and not always try to do multiple things. But here's the other thing you're gonna find too. It's a lot more enjoyable to do the tasks and the things that we have to do if we're not constantly switching gears. So the next time you find yourself, oh gosh, I didn't even mean to turn on. <laughs> the next time you find yourself trying to do three things at once, remind yourself, just do one at a time. You'll get it done twice as fast and then you can move on to the next thing. Okay, let's talk about the kitchen. There are so many things <laughs> we could talk about in here, but I'm gonna simplify it down to the two that I think are most important. One, recognize the season that you're in. What kind of cooking are you doing in your kitchen right now? And again, let's shape it around that. If you're doing a lot of quick cooking, you're not doing a lot of baking or complex meals or anything like that, then let's move out the stuff that we're not using and that is not supporting this current season we're in. So if you have appliances or pans or baking supplies or all these other gadgets that you're not using, one, I would highly encourage you to just declutter them and donate them because most often the gadgets are taking the place of like a cutting board and knife or other tools that we already have in our kitchen and we don't use them because they're a pain to clean up. Does that sound familiar <laughs> at all? So be willing to part with those items so you can free up space in your kitchen. And I really think what you're gonna find is that if your cabinets and drawers are about half full, that your kitchen is gonna function so much better and you're not gonna mind being in it. It's gonna be easier to keep clean and you're gonna cook much more frequently. So let's talk a little bit more about cooking too in regards to meal planning. I know one of the biggest pain points for us is sticking with meal planning. And usually it's because we have too big of a meal rotation or we're trying to go to Pinterest to find new recipe ideas. What I highly encourage you to do is to come up with a very small rotation of meals. Take a piece of paper, list out 20 meals that you know how to make, that you know fairly well, maybe only have to reference the recipe for some measurements, but overall you mostly know how to make them. Write out 20, 
20 meals and then let this be your rotation for the next few months. And what you'll find is that when we're always cooking recipes that we know well, come five o'clock at night when it's time to make dinner, it's not as daunting because we're not having to learn something new in the evening. None of us have emotional energy to learn new recipes at night. Like it's, if, if that has never worked for you, that's why, right? And so we wanna have things we know how to make. And also by limiting our meal rotation, it's very easy to keep all of the ingredients on hand. We have them all here most of the time. And so grocery shopping's easier. I have less grocery inventory to manage. We don't waste food as much. The kids can help more easily because they're recipes that they know too. And so overall, we are so much more successful with meal planning, sticking to the meal plan and cooking at home when we have highly simplified our meal rotation. All right, I'm just making out my to-do list for today. Did you know that there's a magic number when it comes to your to-do list? And it's way less than what you've been putting on. <laughs> All right, so for this tip, we want to shorten our to-do list. Do you know what that magic number is? Three, you may have heard me talk about this before. Three items, you should only have three items on your to-do list for today. And then as you get those checked off, you can add more to it. But for us, if, uh, all the research shows this, that if there are more than three on there, we start to get overwhelmed. We feel like we're not gonna accomplish them all. And that's when we get into that habit too of putting like really easy stuff at the top of our list so we have stuff we can cross off. I know many of us do that, but it's actually not a great tactic when it comes to being productive. So if you have things that you've been putting on your list like uh, take your vitamins, run the dishwasher, do a load of laundry. Those are things that should be habitual or those should be habits. We should have that tied to, I take my vitamins when I get up in the morning and have a glass of water. I do, I start a load of laundry when I get home from work or whatever it is. So those should be habits, not necessarily things that go on our to-do list so that our, our actual to-do list can stay much shorter because we're only putting the one-off things on there. Call the dentist, call the accountant, um, order seed, uh, you know, those types of things that we don't do on a day in and day out basis. But I really think I have another video on this too where we talk about your to-do list and your separate brain dump because we still wanna keep all those extra things that are floating around, just not on our to-do list. Our to-do list should not be our master list of everything that we need to do. It should literally just be our priorities for today. And then when you start getting through this each day, you really start to feel successful and gain confidence in yourself and you are so much more productive than if you had seven to 12 things on here like you used to in the past. All right, so the next thing in our very poorly lit basement is to understand that likes and seasons change. And so we can't try and keep all the stuff from the past just because we feel bad that we spent money on it or someone gave it to us or we've somehow acquired it. And so if we will give ourselves permission to let that stuff go from the past, if it's not something that we still currently enjoy doing, because we end up with all of this extra inventory and we have to remember that it all weighs on us. We know it's there. We've talked about the silent to-do list before. It's all stuff that we still have to manage. And so even if it's tucked away in a basement or an attic or garage, we still know it's there. We still have to try and keep it organized and keep it safe and all that we've talked about before. But if we will be willing to let that stuff go, it is a huge way that we can simplify our life. But also it frees us up to be more present here today and to look forward to the future and what new things we might want to learn and pursue and enjoy. So overall, I'm guessing you're sensing a theme that if we reduce inventory and streamline these different areas, that it does free up extra bandwidth to be able to dedicate to things when they come up and we just can't control them. And it also just makes life so much more enjoyable when we're managing less and we just have one thing that we're focusing on at a time. Our brains love that. Our brains love having a singular focus and not always feeling so divided. And so I hope these tips help a little bit. I would love to know your best tips down below as well, but I love you. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.